Hi, my name is Frederick, I'm a luthier in Paris and I review violin cases for you. Today we'll have a look at one of the cheapest violin cases available on the market. If you may buy it for about 50 US, most people get it for free, as it comes bundled with many violins. It may be free, but is it reliable for your instrument? Let's find out. This case is an OEM case means that it has been designed and manufactured by a company that will sell it to other company, Chinese, European, American, that will retail it or bundle it under their own name. This is different from OEM, where companies typically ask to design and manufacture a case according to specification chosen by the ordering company, and different from brand-made case, where design and sometimes manufacture are done by the retail brand itself. But let's get back to our case. The first thing that will strike you is how light it is. You can literally hold it with one finger. And while this may be explained by its polystyrene and plywood frame design, there is more to it, or should I rather say less. Taking a look at the case, you will notice that there is no fits, no subway handle, no deering anchor. This case comes down to the bare minimum, one uncomfortable hard plastic handle, three backpack anchor for the straps, fix it on the back of the cover rather than the case, and a 3mm padded instrument cover. That's it. Its plywood frame is not much of a frame. It's limited to 1mm thick 2cm wide stripes located on each side of the zipper, just meant to accommodate the screws holding the nylon cover. The straps are no frill 3mm straps, and well I'll concede that considering the lightweight case, they don't feel as bad as the marginally improved one, feature on two or three times heavier violin cases. The real concern here, from the plastic carabiner to the sewing quality, is reliability. Weight-wise, we're at 1 kg 180 with the straps, 1 kg 110 for the case only. For its dimensions, 77 by 25 by 13, it's really light indeed. The case interior is made of the very typical polyester velvet that you find in all Chinese enterprise cases. Oh, and yes, the, um, the lid tends to close by itself and you will need to force it a bit to compress the styrene into the right position. This is another source of concern. Here the plywood frame is minimal and does not do anything for the structural integrity of the case, especially in places like hinges that will progressively lose their structure under the case load. On the inside, the instrument is positioned with an angle at the front of the case. The case offers two accessories compartments, one open at the front, one close at the bottom. I usually like this kind of setup when done properly, but here the depth and width of those compartments will require from you some creativity if you want to fit your shoulder rest. You might have noticed a small padding at the bottom of the valium compartment. This is usually part of an instrument suspension system made to mitigate impact of a fall. Here it isn't, as nothing prevents the valine from hitting the lid. Speaking about the lid, it features two basic bow holders, the kind where your bow hair gets stuck every now and then, and a negrometer. Please note that you insert your bow behind the plywood cover, rather than into bow holders. And you should pay attention to slide your bow out. I know that children tend to pull their bow toward them. On this case, it will break the cover as the plywood is just glued. I've seen this happen countless of time, where this part ends up holding only by its fabrics. Regarding valine compatibility, this case is kind of restrictive. A 35.5 cm as this one fits fine. A 35.9 might fit if you force it a bit into the styrene, but anything above won't fit for sure. And think about placing this case next to a wall, as it just can't stand still and swings back even with a light score load. The music score pocket is of small size. You won't be able to fit large score. A couple of A4 will be fine, and it's actually a good thing. As the case structure can't handle much load, you won't be tempted to overload it with scores. It's now time for the rain shower test, here presented in fast motion. If most cases can handle drizzle and light shower, there is always at least one day when you will be outside without an umbrella when it's raining cats and dogs. The aim of this test is to reproduce extreme weather condition for 2 minutes. 
two minutes will usually give you enough time to find cover, and if you can't, well, you know what to expect for your instrument. As mentioned earlier, this case does not have feet, so it will be sitting on a wet floor during the test. It's now time to have a look, but I don't really like the wet t-shirt looks of the cover. It's the first time that a case feels almost twice as heavy after the shower test. Maybe it's because it's so light to start with that changes in weight are more noticeable. Let's have a look. Well, there's some trace of water and it, yeah, it's slightly damp on the edge where it was in contact with the zipper, but I was expecting a lot worse since the zipper are not well sealed. The second score uh, has a lot of drops, I don't know if you can see them on, on the screen, um, and I'm not sure where they came from. Okay, so the two white linings that uh, are dangling now, um, the rear compartment is wet. Yeah, so it's the, um, the bottom edge of the case. Yes, yeah, really wet. The cover is soaked. And uh, those two parts took in some water. Surprisingly, the bottom of the compartment is actually dry. Um, the lid seems wet as well. Let's have a closer look. Yes. All this area is humid, and I feel that the lining charges himself with the humidity, and that's why they dangle now. The top edge of the case is okayish, definitely humid, but it does not feel soak, um, and the bottom of the case is dry. Um, the instrument cover does not feel wet, maybe it's just slightly humid in places. Before the drop test, I had to face an unexpected issue. It took me two days to have this case completely dry. Um, instead of drying it, the inside fabric rather was getting more humid by the hour. Ultimately, I figure it out. During the test, some water got in between the shell and the cover, hence the wet t-shirt aspect, and this water continues to diffuse in the case after I took the shot. Uh, once I realized that, I placed the case vertically on a cloth to drain the water. Anyhow, it's now time for the drop test. Hmm, I'm not sure that the bridge is still there. Oh, oh crap. Uh, yes, I'll try to zoom in, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is some kind of indentation in the case lid. And just as I saw, the bridge hitted the lid, and um, there was at the impact. Um, hmm. Okay, now the bridge is still there, and uh, well. It's, everything seems okay. I'll double check, but I don't see any crack. The bridge moves slightly, but that's okay. No sound post crack. And on the back, the back is fine as well, so this is a pass. Time for the summary. Well, there really are a lot of shortcomings with this case. The only enjoyable thing, really, is its weight, and that comes at the price of safety. Can we really say it passed the drop test? Not so much when you think about it. A slightly higher drop, a different violin, a little more fragile, with slightly higher arching. It's really not a matter of will your instrument get damaged, but a matter of when. So if you got this case for free with your violin, you will probably be well inspired to change it for something better. And even if you aren't, it's very likely that you will be forced to anyway, as the case is not meant to last. But to be honest, that was to be expected from a $10 case when bought from the factory. I plan to review the improved $20 version of this case in the upcoming weeks to see if it fares any better. So please stay tuned if you are interested and subscribe to my channel. If you liked this video, please thumb it up. Or if you didn't like it, thumb it down. But do not hesitate to ask questions or express your critics in the comments.
Thank you and see you next time.